Something that is really taboo, and a lot of Muslim women, they have it, is vaginismus. And it's what fear-based religion does to a little girl's body. Now, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about fear-based religion. And there's clinical studies that essentially show this as well. And when small little children, they get shamed from a very, very young age, right? And they are constantly told, they are forced to cover up or they're constantly told haram or astaghfirullah or Allah is watching you constantly giving them this sense of constant paranoia as well as though they got, you know, Allah rather than being their best friend, something that they constantly have to be afraid of, right? Before they even understand what any of this even means, right? Her little body, it doesn't understand religion, right? Whether that is Islam, whether that is Christianity or whatever, because honestly, it, it happens as I've heard messages of a lot of Christian women where essentially it happens to them as well. But in my experience, and from what I've heard, is a lot worse with Muslim women, right? And if the fear, it doesn't stay in the mind. It goes into the nervous system and it goes into the lower body. So as parents, many of them assume that they're doing the absolute best for their child by constantly, you know, forcing them to, to wear specific clothing or constantly telling them haram or, you know, close your legs and, you know, uh, giving them this sense of paranoia about Allah. But the truth of the matter is that the clinical, there are clinical studies that show that women that grow up in very um, culture or sort of families that had heavy shame, they have a higher pelvic floor, they have higher pelvic floor tension, right? Even though they are completely relaxed, it's as though that the muscles, you know, the, the vaginal muscles, they are constantly stuck in protection mode. And that's the pattern that we see in vaginismus, right? It's the, it's the body that is guarding this little child because it wasn't safe. So all of those muscles that are constantly tight, and that's not because of Islam, right? But it's because of how Islam was essentially delivered. When Islam was delivered with fear, with threats, right? With shame, with no safety. And the truth is that we have to come to understanding that when we have, you know, religious pressure, but we do not have emotional safety, then that becomes a trauma. Not the religion in of itself, but that becomes the trauma. It's, it's, it's the religious pressure right and the fee-based version and the body stores all of that as trauma exactly the same spot where the shame was actually directed which in the small when the in the case of small these small children was the pelvis so many women are dealing especially a lot of muslim women are dealing with vaginismus and it's not to do with you have you know your faith is bad and you are broken or whatever you're just carrying the weight of every moment in your childhood where, where you're sort of your, your innocent childhood was treated like something sinful, right? And your body is doing the best that it can to protect that little child. So you got to understand that when you got to heal this, it's not 